Hello and welcome to another wonderful video on freedom, sovereignty, your rights, your private rights, your public rights, how to understand these things in order for you to be free. Today we're going to be going over the mechanism used by governments to lawfully convert private property to public property and how they do that and why it is super, super important that you understand how they do that because they, they trick us and they steal from us, and it's unfortunate, and that's why I am doing my best to make sure that I can get out of the system, not as soon as possible, but I'm making my way in that direction. And the more I learn, the more that I realize I want to change my political uh, relationship with the government. So thank you so much for listening. Appreciate to my anchor, anchor listeners. These are going to be short and digestible so that way you can understand them and share them with your friends and know that you're actually learning something. With that being said, we're going to get right into it. The purpose of establishing government is to protect exclusively private individual rights and private property. Your right to say no, your right to not consent to something is protected or should be protected by the the establishment of government. The purpose of the government is to keep private and public property separate. There's a dividing line between the two, never allowing them to commingle without the express consent of the owner. So you have to expressly consent. Yes, I am going to donate my private rights, my private property to the government for whatever use they decide that they want to use it for. The government only has jurisdiction over public property. Very important for us to understand that. It cannot regulate or tax private property. Otherwise, they are depriving you of your right to exclude them from using or benefiting from the use of your private property. Any attempt to convert private property to public without the consent of the private owner is a violation of the Fifth Amendment takings clause. This is extremely important for us to understand. For you to understand that you have, when you have private rights, you should be able to exclude anyone from using or benefiting from the use of your private property. So no government entity can come into your life and say, hey, we need you to do this because it's for the good of the country or for the good of the well-being. If it's your private right, you can say, you know what? No, I don't want you to use my resources, my property, my stuff, my consent to help whatever you're going to do. Because I don't know what the government's doing with with." my consent. I don't know what they're doing with my property. I don't know if there's something divisive or evil or something I don't agree with that they're doing with it. If they're taxing us and they're pooling our money, but they're using it to fund wars or they're using it to fund uh, trafficking or they're using it to fund the uh, filtration of weapons and drugs into the country, that they're using it to perpetuate the the industrial complex of slavery that is found uh, all over the U.S. where we have slaves in, in prison systems. I don't want my money going to those people. So, no, I do not want you to benefit from it. I have an issue with that. So here's a couple of laws, maximums of law. I don't read Latin, so I'm not going to try and read this in Latin. But it says, what is mine cannot be taken away without my consent. And then there's another quote which says, which belongs to us. What belongs to us cannot be transferred to another without our consent. But this must be understood with this qualification, that the government may take property for public use if they pay the owner its value. The title to property may also be acquired with the consent of the owner by a judgment of competent tribunal. Mm -hmm. 
very, I think this is probably the most important thing to listen to and to, to know for this uh, segment. The government steals private property. Here's how they do it. They willfully confuse private rights with public rights and privileges. So they will call a privilege or civil statutes and privileges, they will call them rights, for example, and such as Social Security and Medicare. They will call these privileges instead of public rights. And they do this in order to confuse you and to confuse me so that we cannot distinguish between a right and a privilege. And if we cannot distinguish between a right and a privilege, we won't be able to exclude their control over our private rights because we would not know the difference between what is ours, which we can say, no, don't touch, and what is theirs. So in confusing us, they they essentially coax us into consenting to uh, signing up for certain franchises and f- certain statuses that we don't have to sign up for and we don't have to we don't have to give up our public rights for all property is conclusively presumed to be private until the government satisfies the burden of proving that you consented to donate it to the public. And in our next slide, we are going to be talking about the relevance of such statements. Here's the relevance. Private rights are rights that belong to you exclusively, which means that you can exclusively deny anyone the right to use or benefit from the use of your your rights. The government is tricking people by telling them that they must give up their private rights for the good of the public pe- for the public. That's what they're saying with this with this virus and with the the C19. Now here's the thing and here's I'm just going to give you my my quick thoughts on this the COVID-19 situation. I believe that COVID-19 is a bioweapon. I think that there's sufficient evidence to to believe that it was produced with gain-of-function research or by gain-of-function research. And I believe that those who have had the actual uh, COVID-19, I believe that there have been extremely severe issues, um, even if they survived, that I know people who have had severe issues um, even after having the virus. But I believe that we have to understand that if it is a bioweapon, which I believe it is, and there's sufficient evidence to back that up, because it's a bioweapon, um, we have to understand that it's going to have way worse effects on us than a natural virus would, something that would have kind of naturally sprung up. Now, there are people who say that COVID-19 doesn't exist. That's, I, don't, I don't think that that's true. I think that it does exist. I think that most people, what you probably experienced over the winter was probably not COVID-19. It was probably just the flu, unless you had some severe, crazy symptoms and after effects of, of the virus. I also think that people's bodies and health, uh, depending on how healthy you are, if, you've had, if you're immunocompromised, if you have... Um, other issues, obesity or um, respiratory issues, then it would probably affect you worse, um, just like a flu would probably affect you worse, or just like uh, some other virus, virus SARS, uh, would affect you. So, that all that being said, I, I'm just pointing out that it, it is a thing, um, but they are denying you the right to say no to this shot uh, without the threat of violence. And they are violating the Fifth Amendment takings clause by doing so. The the job of the government is to keep your private and public rights separate. But by confusing them, they have forced you to believe that you must give up your rights for social use. Oh, it's for the good of society. 
The issue that we have is that if you do not consent to getting the shot, then you are considered an evil and a bad person. You're an enemy of the state. You're an enemy to your friends, family, and you're a threat to yourself and to others. Even though the evidence shows us that both people who consent and don't consent can both get the virus and can both spread the virus. And yet they're not treated equally in the workplace. For those who do not consent can lose their jobs, whereas those who do consent uh, do not lose their jobs. Those that are benefiting uh, are not, excuse me, those that are benefiting are not the society. It's not your friends. It's not your neighbors. It's not your family. They're not, if you get a, a shot, it's not the, your friends around you who are benefiting from it. It is the vaccine companies who make billion dollars of off of tests and off of shots. And this is the relevance for you to understand and know today because um, you should have exclusive rights to, uh, to your own property, to your own body, to your own welfare, to your own being. And you don't have to do anything and you shouldn't have to do anything for anybody else without them giving anything back to you. Um, so you should have medical autonomy and you should have uh, medical freedom. The next thing we're going to be talking about, guys, we're gonna, uh, in our next podcast or in our next episode, we'll be talking about the foundation of socialism and the foundation of socialism is a state ownership or control of all property. The foundation, again, of socialism is state ownership or control of all property. Thank you so much for listening. Much appreciated. If you guys get anything out of this, please share it with some of your friends so that they can learn and understand how to be free also and that they can understand the difference between public and private property and how the government confuses them in order to – confuses us in order to take – uh, in order to take them from us. Blessings, you guys. We'll see you on the next episode.